every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made the way for me. Hello, I'm Kelly Copeland. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. This week, my dad, Kenneth Copeland, is sharing from the Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign. In today's session, he teaches us to consider Jesus and the promises of our covenant with God. This is a key subject, especially beginning the new year. We're going to see how God's covenant is available and relevant to us in our daily lives. So get your Bibles and let's join Kenneth Copeland for today's lesson. Go over to the 12th chapter of the book of Hebrews. I need to get both these in. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him that endured such contradiction. God, the covenant, and the contradiction. Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your mind. I consider him. I consider not the pain. I consider not the debt. I consider it not. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I consider it not. I consider him. I consider him who is the high priest of my confession. He is the one that and men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them of whom his witness he lived. I consider him financially. He is my Melchizedek. Glory to God. He's my financier. I consider him. I don't consider the debt. I consider him. I consider him the author and the finisher, the developer, that, that the Greek words, the developer. He's the developer of my faith. Glory to God. I consider him. I consider him. I consider the one, praise God, that walked the shores of Galilee. I consider the one that when the leper said, I know you can if you will. And he smiled and said, of course I will. Hallelujah. And he is the one. I consider him. I don't consider the sickness. I don't consider the disease. Glory to God. I consider the El Shaddai God. I consider the one who's more than enough. I consider the one who is the most high God. Hallelujah. Praise him. Consider him. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord God. John 14, 1. Boy, the 14th chapter of John is one of my most heartfelt chapters. I, 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 I gleaned so much about it from it. Let not your heart. Now, who's the understood subject of the sentence here? You. I am. You are. You let not your heart be troubled. You believe in El Shaddai, believe in me also. Because I am El Shaddai in the flesh. And then my blood is the blood of this covenant. Look at it right here. Here it is. Believe thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Believes thou not that I am in El Shaddai, the Almighty God, and the Almighty God Father is in me? 
the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father God, the Almighty God, the El Shaddai God, Jehovah Rapha God that dwells in me. He does the works. Woo! Verse 12, verily, verily. Oh, when he says two verilies, you better find out verily what it's there for. <laughs> verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also and greater works than he, sh than he shall he do because I go to El Shaddai the Father, the, the Almighty God, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Almighty God may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. I will pray the Almighty God, the Father, El Shaddai, the more than enough God, and he'll give you another El Shaddai, a comforter, the God himself living on the inside of you, that he may abide with you forever. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo, thank you, Lord Jesus. And all this 21st verse. Mm, mm, mm. This verse stands out so strong in it. it it's He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of the Almighty God, the El Shaddai God the more than enough God. And I will love him. Oh, dear Lord Jesus. And I, El Shaddai, Almighty God in the flesh, I will manifest myself to him. Have you ever, ever in your life heard such a thing as that? The Almighty God. Well, Brother Copeland, it just don't seem like to me my prayers got any higher than the ceiling. Are you born again? Uh-huh. <laughs> Baptized in the Holy Ghost? Yeah, shama shama. <laughs> Sweetheart, They didn't need to get any higher than this right here. You're not praying to the God of heaven. Well, you are. Let me tell you something. The Father himself is in heaven. Jesus at the right hand of the Father. The Holy Spirit isn't there. No, he's here. Came here on the day of Pentecost and hadn't left. He's on our side. Yes, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Holy Ghost. Woo. Glory. I was, I was praying one time, and uh, many years ago. And I got caught up in this prayer, and I had a, I, I, I had a yellow legal pad in front of me, and I had written down the, the things that the ministry needed and so forth. And I'd, I, I was really praying over these things. There was a lot of things there financially and equipment and so forth. And I'm just praying and, and, and all of a, of a sudden, I had a, I had a, a, a vision I was in this long room 
And the father came in and sat down. And I was just taken up in this. Jesus came in and sat down on his right. I was facing this, this fairly large table, this long skinny table. And he sat down on the father's right, my left, is looking at him. And through the same door came the Holy Spirit. That threw me off. I said, where's he going? Where's he going to sit? <laughs> I couldn't hardly figure this out. He walked down the length of that table and he sat right down there next to me. He said, give me that. And he took that yellow pad and he said, I'm going to get all this for you. Amen. He said, I've been here before. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, He's my advocate. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He's my standby. He's my comforter. He's my strengthener. He's my intercessor. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what the standby is? How many of you are old enough to remember when there was no passing gear in the car? You just jammed it down there and that's all there was, baby. <laughs> and if it didn't have it, you were just stuck with it, <laughs> whatever, whatever it was. And I remember, I thought, this is about the coolest thing I ever saw, man. I mean, just push it down and just get that other gear and go on. <laughs> Particularly some of them old dogs I was driving. And I thought, hey, this is good. I'm going to tell you something. He's your passing gear. Hallelujah. He's your standby. You got that, you got that big old trailer behind your truck. You start up this hill oh, and then slam it down the floor and get it. Glory <laughs> to God. When all else, I'm telling you, and you just down and, and you just gone as far as you could go and you've stretched your faith just as far as it'll go. Thank God he's got nine power operations waiting on you to believe God. Pow! Step over. Step over into the power realm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And particularly as ministers. And I come to the place where I'm, I'm to the end of myself, which is very often. I come to the place, I don't know what to do. Go in here, not up here, not up there. Go in here. Go inside. Become God inside minded. Become God inside conscious. El Shaddai is in me. The, my, oh, the more than enough God. The creator of all things is living right there on the inside of you. And all it takes is his word in your mouth and faith in your heart. And he's ready. Calling things. That's one of the fundamental laws of faith. In fact, thank you, Lord. Yes, sir, I'll do that. What are you watching? When you're watching the World Series. Masters of the fundamentals. That the game is the game. And there are laws that govern faith. By what law works? No. By the law 
of faith. The number one fundamental of faith is believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth. That's number one. Number two, faith will not work in an unforgiving heart. Number three, Abraham's blessing cannot be received with Thomas's faith. And number four, faith calls things that be not as though they were. And number five, faith demands corresponding action. The, the most difficult one for people is calling things that be not as though they were. That's what Abraham did. Calling things that be not as though they were. Well, I call it like it is. Well, it'll stay like it is. <laughs> Amen. People really have a, a mental challenge and, and problem with that. And I can understand that. Particularly if you've been raised um, the way Gloria and I were raised, the first message we ever heard was faith. Amen. I first heard Oral Roberts preach. I mean, he's my father in the faith. And I was so blessed to become uh, part of the flight crew. Now, listen, this goes back to what we were talking about during the offering. I was in a dilemma. <laughs> if I got a job, I didn't have time to go to school. If I go to school, I don't have time to get a job. Woe is me. What was I needing? A job. What's the only thing I knew how to do? Fly. I needed a flying job. <laughs> but see, I mean, I was scripturally illiterate. I didn't know he already had that job planned for me. The night before I was supposed to register, I told Gloria, I said, I, I'm, I know I'm supposed to be here and I'm going in here and get on my face. I, uh, you know, Abram fell on his face before God and God talked to him. <laughs> he probably talked to you if you fall on your face. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, and I just fell on the floor, just praying in tongues as hard and fast as I could. That's one thing about praying in the spirit. You can pray in tongues and think something else. And I thought, I wonder if I'd stop and listen if he'd say anything to me. And I stopped and he said, well, it's about time. I hadn't been able to get a word in edgewise. <laughs> get up on your feet. I sent you here and I'll take care of you. Man, I jumped and, and you know, came to attention. I came out of there and she said, what happened all night long? You ain't been in there 20 minutes. <laughs> I said, I got the answer, girl. Well, the next day I went to register. I still didn't have any money. Like Charles Capps used to say, we are so broke we couldn't pay attention. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, but I'm, I'm, I'm walking with him. So I got all registered and everything. I got out in front of the, the Learning Resource Center. And uh, this is the very first, well, this is the, the year of the first graduating class at Oral Roberts University. And my feet stuck to the ground. I couldn't, this happened to me three times years back. But anyway, my feet stuck to the floor and I couldn't, to the concrete out there and I couldn't move. And uh, the Lord said, go back in, go up the sixth floor. I said, I can't go up there. He said, go back to the inn and go to the sixth floor. I said, Lord, they warned us about that. That's the Vatican up there. You can't go up there. Now, I don't know, I don't know where they came from, but that's, that's what I said. He said, they work for me. Go up there. Well, I got in the elevator. I couldn't do it. I punched the fifth floor. <laughs> and of course, 
it's, it's a library now, but back there then it's just this huge empty room. They didn't have a library yet. He said, I said the sixth floor. Okay. I went up there. Now remember what my dilemma was? I don't know how to do anything but fly an airplane. That's, so that's the only thing I'm qualified to do. Sing songs, but nobody knew that. <laughs> and I, I walked up to Ms. Rook's desk because I didn't know who she was. And of course, I'm 30 years old, so I got away with it for a minute or two until I told him I was a student. <laughs> I said, my name's Kenneth Copeland. I didn't have any idea what I was going to say. <laughs> my name's Kenneth Copeland. I just registered as a student here. And I know this ministry has an airplane and I'm, I'm qualified as a commercial pilot and I need all the help I can get. Thank you very much. I want it out of there. <laughs> and I turned around and there stood Oral Roberts. And he said much, I mean, in his shoes, he's almost 6'4". I literally did this. I am not kidding you. He said, I'm Royal Roberts. I said, hi, bye. Hi, bye. Hi, bye. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't tell him. He might as well have said, I'm God. Who are you, boy? I, 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 was, I was so dumbfounded. I didn't know anybody standing there in the first place. He said, I understand you're a commercial pilot or, or commercially rated. I said, yes, sir. Can you handle our airplane? Yes, sir. Now listen, he already knew what he would do. Huh? He said, two weeks ago, I started to hire a new co-pilot and the Spirit of God, El Shaddai, said, no, I have a student coming that's supposed to have the job and you're my man. And it started a relationship with him that was so precious that lasted until he went to heaven. <coughs> Amen. Can you see it? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Covenant keeping God. The Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast study notes will help you dive deeper into these powerful word-based teachings. Get all five days of notes at one time. Use them during the week for your personal study time. Download them free at kcm.org.uk slash notes. Create a special family devotional time to follow along with the notes as you watch the broadcast. Study the scriptures with your children and begin instilling God's word now. Use these notes to build your faith library and build up a heritage of faith. Our daily lives are filled with many opportunities to choose. But the most important decision of faith you'll ever make is to receive Jesus Christ as your Redeemer. In the six-part teaching series, Revelation of Redemption, Kenneth Copeland explains how Jesus paid the full price for your redemption by destroying the works of the enemy. Everything you've ever needed is provided in your redemption so you can experience good health, wealth, and life prosperity. This KCM foundational teaching series on MP3 disc comes with a companion study guide. Unlock the power of the greatest exchange ever made for you, an act of God's love that was finished on the cross, providing for you rights and privileges so you can walk in victory and success. Now is the time for you to identify with the finished works of Jesus and live the life that is rightfully yours. Request your free Revelation of Redemption package from Kenneth Copeland Ministries at kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or when you call 01225-787-310. Start enjoying the benefits of your redemption and get a clear picture of all you have access to in earth and in heaven. This free offer is good for 30 days. Postage charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information.
Our free product offer this week is the Revelation of Redemption package. We have a study guide by Kenneth Copeland and an MP3 disc. And the, you know, the title may seem deep. I mean, I think when we hear the word revelation, we think revelation as in the end of the Bible, as in, I don't know, I don't, that's too deep for me. We don't need to be that way. Let's dig in. But we're talking about a revelation of redemption. This subject is all about what Jesus did for you, what he gave you. You know, he gave you freedom. When you've been redeemed as a born again Christian and child of God, you've been made free by Jesus Christ. He's redeemed you from the entire curse, which if you read that, that everything is in there. Everything you want to be free from is in there. No matter what the challenge you're facing, the conflict or the contradiction to what the word says, Jesus took care of it at the cross. And there is an answer that wins in every situation, every time. He paid the full price for your life, including salvation and healing, protection, prosperity. He paid for everything that concerns you. And the next step is, how do I walk in it? How do I even know what it is? Well, that's why we want to send you this series. So request your free package today on kcm.org. And we want to send it, get it right out to you. You know, partners, I want to tell you about a meeting coming up. And I'd love to see you at the Branson Victory Campaign. April the 2nd through the 4th in Branson, Missouri. Let me share with you just for a second about the heart behind these meetings. My parents have these meetings for you. This is a time for you to come and experience for yourself God, His Word, being in His presence, worship. Come face to face with Jesus. When your heart's open, you're worshiping in that presence, in the atmosphere of faith, He's going to give you victory answers and you can receive from Him what you need. We love you, God loves you, and Jesus is Lord. Continue to grow in your faith in God. Go to kcm.org.uk to receive your free digital download of today's Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Believe God to bring new visions, His manifested power, and great change in your life. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. So come together, worship together, and know this, that the greatest is yet to come. The value of prayer is more than you've ever known. And the times of prayer, the times of intercession have come to a place where it's no longer so much of the groaning, but the praising and the shouting for the victory has come. Hallelujah. April 2nd through 4th, Kenneth Copeland welcomes you to the 2020 Branson Victory Campaign at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri, USA. April 23rd through 25th, join Kenneth Copeland at the Sacramento Victory Campaign at the Calvary Christian Center in Sacramento, California, USA. June 29th through July 4th, get ready to celebrate faith and freedom at the West Coast Believers Convention in Ontario, California, USA. August 3rd through 8th, bring your whole family to the Southwest Believers Convention at the Convention Center in Fort Worth, Texas, USA. For more information, go to kcm.org events.